Welcome to the Frey Flag Pack. It's Termex here, and welcome back to another Borderlands 3 build video. Today, we're going to be making a build centered around the 7th Sense Jacob's Pistol that has been added with DLC 2, Guns, Love, and Tentacles. I'm really excited to make a build about this gun, and I finally got the setup I wanted, along with a bunch of farming hours and the help of my amazing subscribers and some friends in my Discord. I now bring you the ultimate seventh sense flak build. Let's hop right into it. All right, so to start off into the hunter tree, we're going to be putting four out of five in interplanetary stalker for the bonus stack damage when we get kills. Three out of three in the leave no trace, just so we can add ammo back to our magazine because this gun does not naturally have this. Three out of three in the head count, so we can get our action skill back quicker when we score a critical hit. Five out of five in a two fang because if we shoot two projectiles, we're going to be having six of those little pellets coming from the enemy instead of three. 3 out of 3 in the big game because the hunter skill duration will be doubled on all of our hunt skills and the effects of those will be boosted by 30%. 3 out of 3 into the most dangerous game so we get 25% gun damage and 10% crit damage every time we kill a badass. 1 out of 1 into Galactic Shadow for 15% raw critical hit damage. 3 out of 5 in a Grim Harvest for the 9% gun damage but we only put 3 points into it just so we can move down and finally get Megavore. Critical hits are a big part of this gun because it procs its most powerful effect. And this is basically what we're going to need so we don't have to be in fadeaway all of the time. Speaking of fadeaway, over into the stalker tree, 5 out of 5 in a furious attack for more gun damage while shooting. 3 out of 3 in the all my BFFs for shared health regeneration. This health regeneration is very helpful because Flak needs survivability, especially when it comes to level 57. And this just helps it out a lot. 3 out of 5 in a self-repairing system so he has more maximum health and a little bit more health regeneration. 1 out of 1 to lick the wounds because, uh, just get the perk, alright? The perk, it will save your life, it will make you happy, and you'll get a lot less mad at the game. 3 out of 3 into turn tail and run for extra gun damage and fire rate. And you get regeneration and damage reduction while on the move, which is very helpful for the Maliwan takedown. And in general, bossing in arenas where there's homing projectiles or just in mobbing if you feel like running away. 3 out of 3 into the Fast and the Furriest. It is 5 out of 3 because of my class mod that boosted it, but it's almost 50% gun damage along with a little extra movement speed. 5 out of 5 in a Hidden Machine. I know this skill is bugged, but it's going to get fixed soon, and it still kind of works sometimes, so just put 5 points into it. Because we're not going to benefit from Fire Rate or Sikkim, and we're definitely not going to benefit from Eager to Impress because we already have headcounts. 2 out of 2 into Rage and Recover for extra health, and since we have all my BFFs, it's going to make Rage and Recover work a lot better than normal. And 1 out of 1 into the Power Inside for the 25% extra damage when we use our action skill, or 50% extra damage when we use it at full health. As for the setup you want to run, you want to run Fade Away along with Until You Are Dead for the health regeneration and movement speed, and Unblinking Eye for extra critical hit damage. And for the pet, I always like to think personal preference, but since we're running with elemental weapons, we're going to go with a Spider-Man Scorcher for that 10% buff, and a little bit of health regeneration as well. Over into our Guardian rank, it will be disabled for the purpose of this build, so no matter what level you are, how much experience you have, this build will definitely work for you. Over into the gear, you're going to start off with the Dastardly 7 Cents. Now you may be wondering, Term, why isn't this gun anointed? Well, this gun cannot be anointed, and I think it's for good reason. This gun is very powerful. It could use the anointments, but it's just, it's so powerful. Maybe they'll add anointments in the future, but I highly doubt it. This gun really isn't in need of it. But the thing about this gun is when you shoot an enemy, you're going to be having a bunch of targets. I'll show you in Sanctuary real quick, but the whole premise of this gun, if you know about the King or Queen's Call, every time you shoot those pistols, you shoot one projectile and then three projectiles fly up into the air and home back on your enemy. This is kind of similar to how this gun operates, but a little bit different. But I think it's a little bit better in here is why. We're going to go over to the target dummy in Sanctuary, just so I can show you guys what I mean. 
Now, when we're going to shoot this dummy, you're going to see a bunch of these little projectiles fly away. Now, what we do is, as you see, they're not homing back in on the target, no matter what we're doing. But right when we reload, they home back in. So when you're in the fight, you want to load into the enemy, and then reload. And then, as you can see, a bunch of damage is going to stack on top of the enemy. Now that I explained that, let's move on to our actual equipped gear. For the shield, for once, I went with a stopgap, a level 57 stopgap with a cryo damage anointment, which helps a lot since there's no anointment on the 7 cents, and it will always come in cryo. And I went with the hex for my grenade because it's not been getting a lot of love recently, and I believe it's an underrated grenade still. I think it's still very viable. And we get the action skill and anointment with bonus fire damage. You can always switch this out with... I'll, I'll have a Hunter Seeker in the safe file you guys can use, and even the Moxie's Bouncing Pair if you're into that, but they're all different anointments. Yes, this will be a PC safe file if you were curious. As for the Relic, I went with the Snow Drift, but I went with Pistol Damage and Magazine Size. The Magazine Size is mainly because it's only a Magazine Size of 6, and to me that's not really enough when you're trying to constantly proc leave no trace because with leave no trace you have to shoot fast and if you don't have a big enough mag it's going to be useless so the mag 9 really helps when you're fighting distance targets because the projectiles do have some travel time as for the class mod i got a stack bot which was given to me by one of my amazing amazing subscribers in my discord it has pistol damage jacob's crit damage and action skill cooldown rate now, Sackbot's going to help out a little bit with this, but not as much as you think. The extra crit is going to help, but since we're only having a three-shot fadeaway build, it's only going to help out with our first three projectile shots. But, nothing less, still a lot of damage. And I forgot to mention, Sackbot did give us some points into the blue tree for pack tactics. People think you need to spec into the points for them to work, but when your class mod boosts a skill, you do not need to be specced into that skill for the boost to occur. I've had many builds with two points into Frenzy, and Frenzy actually works when I don't even have any points into the blue tree in general. So when people tell you that, don't listen. It's complete bull poo poo. Okay. But anyway, since I want to show you guys the main potential of this build, I think it's going to be better if I go into Athenas, just because Athenas has a wide range of enemies. You probably saw a little bit of it in the trailer, or I guess the preview of this build in the beginning of the video. But people always ask, why do you always run Athenas on your build videos? It's because there's a range of enemies. Armored enemies, shielded enemies, heavyweight enemies, and annoying enemies. It's like a good mix of everything. So it lets you know, in general, what the build's going to perform like. So, what we're going to do, I tried this with Rack Attack, and Rack Attack kind of helps, it kind of works, but for me, Fade Away is a lot better with survivability. And, I know I'm going to have the comment, if you're wondering what skin I am running, it is the Butt Dazzle that you get for the Season Pass. I just want to get that out of the way, because I always have that question, but let's continue. Go into our Fade Away, go in with this little Heavyweight, reload. Okay, that was a little overkill, I didn't need to put that many shots into him, but it worked out fine. I killed him before I even reloaded. As you see, that might happen sometimes. But the projectiles do have a travel speed. Like, they're not instant, which is kind of unfortunate. But it balances out the gun, I guess. Every gun has to have some sort of balance. And I also got a question in my Discord if this will replace the King's Call. And I think for some things it will. But I think they both have their uses because the projectiles on this gun are wonky sometimes. But the King's Call, the projectiles are pretty consistent regardless of what you're doing. Oh, there's a guy behind me. I didn't even realize that. I was like, where's this damage coming from? Oh, but that's fine. We're going to kill him real quick and head back up. Go back into fadeaway. And kill some more of these guys. The three-shot fadeaway is actually a lot better than most people think. And we're getting our action skill back fairly quickly. But the travel time isn't too much of a big issue for me. Because, I don't know. I guess it makes up for it with the projectiles that float down. That's probably why it's a thing in the first place. But one big thing is like fast moving targets like these war dogs. They're going to be more of a pain in the butt. Just because they're moving around and you have to like shoot side to side. Alright, we are at Shrant. Let's throw some of our hunter seekers to activate our furious attack. Pop in the fade away. It's not going to be the quickest kill in the world. Oh, I forgot to put on our shock. This might interfere with it, but that's completely fine. There we go. As you see, it's not the fastest kill in the world with Tron. Because like I said, he's a little weird. But overall, it's not the worst kill ever. It's going to take a few clips. This will probably be our last clip. Ooh, very close. And we're done. There you go. So for someone like Tron, it's not going to be the quickest. But there is a cool trick I want to show you guys. You might have saw a little glimpse of it in the preview. 
when I was fighting Grave Ward, but we're going to quickly respawn back into the game and kill Trant. Now, the way this little... It's not even a bug. People that call crit swapping a bug, I don't really listen to them. Crit swapping has always been a part of Borderlands, and if they didn't want it in the game, they would have removed it a long time ago. It was in Borderlands 2. It was a way a lot of builds were centered around. Sorry. But I want to show you guys something. We're going to put some bullets in the Catron, and we have to reload, right? Let's go into photo mode. All these little projectiles, they can crit, believe it or not. These projectiles can crit. And what we're going to do, we're going to switch to our Unforgiven, which has a bunch of crit damage, and it's going to make whatever amount of these projectiles crit do a bunch of damage, 432% extra damage to be exact, because that's the highest you can get on the Unforgiven. And the goal is hopefully enough of these projectiles crit that you're going to be doing a lot more damage. I one-clipped Grave Ward with this trick, and it's part of the game. It's not the core center around the build, as you guys saw, but if you want to kill things faster... You can use this trick. The Unforgiven will be in the save file. You guys can have fun with it. And, yeah, there you go. It took three clips last time for that to happen. And after one clip, his shield's almost gone. Okay, all the projectiles went into the ice cube right there. But if we do another fadeaway, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to kill him fully with the Unforgiven. Ooh, pretty close. So instead of, like, six clips... With normal, it takes about three clips. Oh, I forgot to reload. It takes about three clips with the Unforgiven. So it helps, but it's not game breaking. So it's not cheating. I don't know why people think crit swapping is cheating. But yeah, crit swapping is almost starting to become normal because with the new balances and levels. But yeah, I enjoy this build. I'm glad I got to uh, post this build early. And I hope you guys enjoy the build. Obviously, there's going to be a save file in the description for all you PC players. And down there, you could find my flag pack of Discord if you want to join that. And consider subscribing if you want to support me and what I do here. Hit a like on that video if you want to see more Borderlands 3 flack content. Thank you guys so much for the support. And I forgot to mention, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch soon. So if you guys want to check that out, it will be in the description as well. Anyway, I hope you guys have a terrific day. And me and Scorch Jr. will see you guys later.